let me let you in on one of the biggest secrets in game collecting. Some of the most expensive games out there are absolute hot garbage. Let's take a look at the Nintendo Entertainment System, by far one of the most popular game systems to collect for. And some of the most expensive games are the likes of Peekaboo Poker. And oh, did I mention Stadium Events? The most famous or rather infamous game to ever be released for the Nintendo Entertainment System? This game sells for thousands upon thousands of dollars. But just a few months after launch, it was re-released and renamed World Class Track Meet. And honestly, I don't think that game's very good either. But there are some really expensive games for the NES that are actually pretty decent. Thanks to this completely legitimate cartridge I got from my local Chinatown, Whoa. I was able to experience them. So today on Stuff We Play, we're going over five great NES games that you probably can't afford. And by the way, before we go on, I'd like to mention that today's video is sponsored by Viceroy Kicks, the achievement brand for gamers. This Kickstarter offers a wonderful new line of shoes for gamers along with the ability to earn real life video game achievements. Link to the Kickstarter in the description below and stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more about them. But for now, let's get right in to today's video. Welcome to Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro. And if that sounds cool to you, why not subscribe? And what we're talking about today is not only weird and retro, but also so expensive that you might be better off buying a new car. But anyways, let's get right into it. And the first game we're talking about today is Mighty Final Fight. Mighty Final Fight is a beat-em-up that was the retelling of the original Final Fight arcade game, though this is mostly different. This was released by Capcom super late in the Nintendo Entertainment System's lifespan, all the way in 1993. To put this in perspective, the Super NES had already been out for several years at this point, and the Sega Genesis even longer, with that one having come out back in 1989. This game once again features Metro City Mayor Hagar's daughter Jessica being kidnapped by the Mad Gear Gang, and thus Cody Guy Mayor Hagar, who, by the way, is a former wrestler, okay, why not, setting off to kick ass and take names in order to save the day and save his daughter. Now, unlike the SNES version of Final Fight, which was just a scaled down port of the arcade game, all three characters from the arcade game are playable in Mighty Final Fight. Unfortunately, this is at the expense of a two-player mode. Even though this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, Mighty Final Fight is a one-player romp only. But what also makes up for this is its unique leveling system, where players gain experience by defeating enemies in each stage. Now what's cool about the experience system here is the type of experience you gain depends on the finishing move used in each stage against each enemy, though leveling up in general will increase strength by vitality and potentially unlock even new abilities. So this game's definitely great, it's beautiful and vibrant, has a great soundtrack, but you want to know why is it so expensive and why are you probably better off emulating this one? Well a loose copy of this game is going to run you at least 180 US dollars, while for a complete in box copy you're going to be looking to plop down at least 450. Wow. But this is only the first of five games on today's list, and let me tell you, it's by far the cheapest game here. The next game we're talking about is a shoot-'em-up, or a shmup, if you will, and that's Gunnack. And let me be the first to tell you, I absolutely love this genre. This was released by the ASCII Corporation in 1991, and takes place in a distant future where humanity has depleted Earth of all of its natural resources and thus have to move into an artificial solar system. A sudden burst of cosmic radiation causes inanimate objects to come to life, so it's up to you as Commander Gunnack to enter your ship and go off to save the universe by killing everything to death. While this initially seems like a rather standard shoot 'em up, it's made special by how great its presentation and gameplay is. Most of the sprites here are fairly small, but bosses are absolutely massive and detailed, and scrolling is super fast while sprite flicker is kept to an absolute minimum. There's also some nice cutscenes, and the cherry on top of here is a fantastic soundtrack. Seriously, some of these tunes were stuck in my head even after I powered down my Retron 3. Yeah, my actual NES is in my American collection, fight me. Your ship has access to five different types of primary weapons and four types of secondary bombs, which are mapped to the A and B buttons respectively. These are dropped by enemies and you can gather them throughout each stage. Weapons can also be upgraded as well by collecting multiples of the same type of weapon icon. Money is also found in each stage and can be spent at a shop between stages to upgrade your ship. This is a fantastic game, and it's a shame it's so expensive. A loose NES card of this game will run you about $200, while if you want a complete inbox, you're looking at about $300. Wow. Now the next three games on this list all fall into one type of category. The side-scrolling platformer. I know, it's a platformer, you have to understand how popular these were. Making something a platformer in the 1990s was like slapping Battle Royale onto something nowadays, 
Or like me slapping this bit about platformers in the 90s being like battle royale games nowadays into my videos. So let's go ahead and talk about Panic Restaurant. So this game was developed by EIM and released by Taito in 1992, and follows Chef Cookie whose restaurant has been cursed by the evil rival chef Odove. It's probably a mistranslation of the term Oz de I, I probably mispronounced that too. He's Gordon Ramsay essentially. This game is definitely one of the most eye-catching titles on the NES. It has a lot of pastel colors and it's really just appealing in all the best ways. So the evil Gordon Ramsay has taken over Cookie's restaurant and thus you must battle through six stages filled with anthropomorphic food and kitchen utensils before of course facing now with the big bad at the end. Or you know, you can do what I did and just give up after stage four. This game is a definition of NES hard. Seriously, after about halfway through, it gets to controller destroying levels of difficult. Though there's still a lot to love here. And you know what? I know a lot of people love this brutal difficulty. And if you do, then this game is definitely for you. Despite the insane difficulty jump roughly halfway through the game, this is still an absolutely phenomenal title. And you know what? Despite how much I'm knocking on the difficulty, there's still a great balance in the first few stages. And I'd say it's a must play. Well, I mean if you can find a way to play it, especially seeing how absolutely terribly expensive it is to get a physical cartridge of it. If you want a loose cartridge of this game, you're looking at about 500 US dollars. But if you want it complete in box, looking at over a thousand. Wow. So the next game on our list is also the only licensed game on this list, as far as I know. For all I know, Gunnack could be based off of some sort of obscure Japanese property I don't know about. But anyways, we're talking about the Flintstones. Surprise a Dinosaur Peak. And yes, this is another side-scrolling platform, and I'll be honest, I'm not a big Flintstones fan. But this game is actually really great. This was published by Taito way at the end of the NES's lifespan in 1994. This title was also not to be confused with the earlier and much, much more common, The Flintstones The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy, which was famously hacked and sold in the black market as Seven Grandad Super Mario Brothers. Now there's a few reasons why this game is so exceptionally rare. It's rumored to have been exclusive to Blockbuster Video, though this is only a rumor and there are reports I was actually available to buy, but as I wasn't born until 1998, I can't verify this from first-hand accounts. But regardless, this is a great vibrant looking game that follows both Fred and Barney as they set off across the world to save Pebbles and Bam Bam. It features a unique gameplay mechanic where you can switch on the fly between each character. Fred and Barney also have their own unique abilities, leading to levels that play around with having the two characters switch with each other to solve puzzles. There's a diverse set of stages filled to the brim with great platforming and puzzle solving challenges, and the pace is broken up on occasion with a nice mini game, such as this weird basketball one. This is a great game, and something I think everyone who has a chance should definitely go play. But if you want it physically, it's also a bank breaking title. And something that you're really not likely to find at a game store for like five bucks. If you want a loose copy, nowadays that's gonna run you upwards of 800 US dollars. But complete, wow, there's very few complete listings, but on average they tend to go for over $2,000. Wow. But none of these compare to was perhaps the most famous of these games. And it's a game that I think is one of my favorite NES titles. And of course, we're talking about Little Samson. This is once again a side-scrolling platformer, and this game was developed by Takaru. I think this was one of the only games they made, but as it easily shows, they were incredibly talented. This was published by Taito in 1992, and you know, I'm really noticing a trend here. Taito really liked publishing stuff in small quantities. So Little Samson is a game that follows a childlike main character named Samson, or in Japan, he's known as Lickle, because that's what this game was known as in Japan, and as you can see from the title screen, gee, I wonder what version I'm playing here. Samson here is joined by three companions, who must go and save their kingdom from an evil prince. What I absolutely adore about the presentation here is that, though the plot is a simple, side-scrolling platformer plot, it's presented completely without dialogue. But these are still impressive cutscenes for an 8-bit game. Initially it seems like a Mega Man clone, especially seeing as the game begins with a stage select and Samson himself is essentially just a Mega Man who can climb on walls and ceilings. However, the three other characters have their own distinctive gameplay styles. There's Kakira the Dragon, who can float for short periods of times and shoot fire. And then there's Gom the Golem, who's big, bulky, and slow moving, but also has a long-reaching punch attack and can stand on death spikes without taking any damage. And then we have K.O. the Mouse, 
who has a laughably short health bar, but is so small and fast that he can reach paths that can't be reached by the other characters. He also has a really powerful bomb attack, and like Samson, can climb on walls. Levels are also a bit less Mega Man-esque, and seem to have more verticality than those games. They take advantage of how the player can switch between characters at any moment as well, and really and truly, there is something here for everyone depending on your preferred platforming playstyle. Despite having great reviews and being a fantastic game in general, one of the best in the NES, this game sold horribly. It is thought that between a lack of promotion, a small print run, and a western name that seems oddly biblical in nature, this title sold so terribly apparently that this is what led to developer Takaru to shut its doors. Little Samson has never seen a re-release, but it still must play for any lover of retro video games, especially the Mega Man titles. However, it's also the most expensive game on today's list. You want a loose copy of this game? You're looking at over $1,200 nowadays. While if you want it complete, that's three grand. $3,000, you heard me right. But you know what? At the very least, this is a great reason to get a Raspberry Pi. But you know what, I maybe begin to ramble on just a bit. If you want to see me talk more about obscure Nintendo goodness, perhaps check out this video I did on All Night in the Pwn Super Mario Brothers, the Mario game that's never seen a re-release outside of Japan. But also, once again, I'd like to thank Viceroy Kicks for sponsoring this video. This is an awesome new shoe Kickstarter for this achievement brand for gamers. Gaming is something that has recently earned a bit of a reputation as something that has nothing but a negative influence. But of course, for the most part, the opposite is true. This is what Viceroy believes, and as such, they are offering real-life gaming achievements. One of their tiers of shoes is a competitive tier, which requires to get them, for example, to be ranked in the top 15% of a competitive online game. This is a fantastic Kickstarter that I think at the very least you should check out in the link in the description below. But while we're at it, why don't we subscribe to stuff we play for more great content like this, or even back us on Patreon, because every dollar earned from Patreon does go back into the channel itself. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what your favorite NES games are down in the comment section below. Stay classy and I'll see you next time.